Sorry about the big delay in updates. This video will have the footage up until the point where I lost a bunch of footage, and then I'll do a bit of a summary at the end of where I'm up to. Uh, because after I lost all the footage, I just became disheartened and stopped recording. Also, also, it's just been too damn hot to record. It's like 40 degrees out here, and my phone keeps bitching about it being too hot. If it's not too hot, then it's been raining, at which point it's been too noisy out here to record. Either way, I have been making progress uh, down where I'm putting this battery down the side of my house. I've had to pull up a garden there and repave it all and everything like that. So I've been doing lots of stuff like that. Didn't record any of that because... No one wants to see a hot, sweaty man working in his backyard. I've had a few people asking me about the construction of the actual battery pack itself. Um, so I thought I'd just do a quick overview of the, the case and the pack and that. The lid of the case is just like a thin plasticky material. Uh, this is where all the ports are across the front where the aircon and high voltage leads and the low voltage plug and that were all coming, coming out of it. In front of this was this bar here, which is basically just a glorified piece of patio tube. Like it's just a square rectangle. It looked like a real afterthought it was just bolted in a couple bolts and it just bolted up sort of like about here uh, in front of the battery pack, in front of all those connectors there. I assume it's just as a bit of a extra bit of uh, protection from you know stuff coming up from the road and hitting, hitting on these front connections across the battery. Uh, the case lid itself, um, I said it's just a thin plastic, but it's got this uh, aluminium strip around the outside, obviously just to make sure it sandwiches down on this foam seal gaskety stuff here. It just feels like a, uh, just feels foam. It doesn't feel like rubbery or anything like that. Um, and then across the front here and all the way around the sides and everything is like a, a rubbery bumper sort of compound. The, uh, the battery pack itself is about 27 mil thick. This thing. The case itself is about 27 mil thick. This section at the front here is about 25 mil deep. So this plate at the front here is about two mil thick. And then here on the plate that actually goes underneath all the battery cells across to the back of the pack there, uh, measures are about 22 mil deep. So that means that the plate going under the cells is about five mil thick. This bit around the outside here is about 40 mil. Um, 40 mil, 30, maybe 35-ish sort of area. I'm going around it, but it actually slopes down. So it's actually quite a, sizable chunk of aluminium in there um, between there and there and then all around the sides down each side of the pack it's got this big wing on it underneath the battery here we've got this this sound deadener mat stuff like a just another layer of 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 protection or just to take like all the stone chips and stuff like that out of it and just generally protect the bottom of the battery there and that's sort of like riveted on all around the battery it's fairly stiff stuff gets a little bit thicker here it's about two mil thick up here but then it goes probably now about an extra mil or so thicker under under the rest of it there it's a bit hard to catch that on camera that it's got a bit of a step down yeah you can't really see it this thing is just destined to not have fuses on my bms cell tabs I had gone through and tinned all these connections across here so I could solder onto them and that way I could keep so if you see here we've got the BMF the, the bus bar here uh, is spot welded onto here which goes through this tiny little track around here and onto here and it's soldered onto there and then it's um, spot welded onto that pass through and I was thinking, well, I'll try and keep this little fusible link here for my BMS cell taps. So I thought I would just go through and I'll just tin all these connections across here and I'll just solder wires onto them um, to pull off. 
but in the process of heating those terminals up to solder to them, they've come unsoldered from the circuit board. So, bring that back out again. So here I've got 6.6 because .6, it's gone up and down two cells. So there's about 3.3 volts in each cell there at the moment. But on here, make sure make it make contact. I got six volts, which is just capacitive coupling. This, when I've heated this up to put a blob of solder on here, it's uh, desoldered from this little circuit board here. Here we go, I've got all the cell taps all done up. Uh, now I just need to terminate them all and run them over to the actual BMS itself. Finally halfway. Really dislike past Brendan at the moment. Well, that's just put a hold on everything. I just ran out of heat shrink. So I'll need to get more heat shrink before I can go any further with that part of it. But my next step will be to put some connectors on the end of all these fuse holders here. I'm just going to use these little things here. I'll solder all the fuse holders onto this one here. That way I can just plug that in there. No. Other way around. What are you talking about, Brennan? You're on crack. I'll take this bit here and just bridge all those terminals across here together. Um, that way I can just plug it in and unplug it if I need to do any diagnostics. I want to check individual cells and individual modules. I can unplug this this little plug here and, and then I'll um, have access to everything. Check the voltage of each individual cell without all the other ones interfering.
Here's where we're at. Battery, all the BMS wires all been run down to these green junction points here, which will then go off onto the actual BMS itself. I've deleted all the fuses out of it because there just wasn't enough room in the battery case to have them. I had to replace this solenoid here because it's, it's operated by 12 volt with this one here, which is a uh, 48 volt one, so I can switch that off of battery pack power. So I've got positive coming from the far end of the pack down through to here, through this fuse, up through this solenoid, and then into my high volt. Into, into the original high voltage um, junction port, which will then go off of, over to my inverter. Pack negative, it's coming from down, from up that, up that point there, down to here. I have, uh, where are we? 46.5.4 volts on my whole pack. Okay, and here is my absolute mess of connections. So all the positive connections are all looped together and all run down to this behemoth of a mass here, which then runs off over to the other side of the pack. And down here is just a bunch of bus connections. All this cable still need to be secured up in place, obviously. But other than that, the actual electrical side of this battery pack is more or less done. I've just got to move it around the side of my house and, and wire it into the inverter. Last thing to point out is that, in case you haven't noticed, I've put this thing up on a frame now. So I welded up a frame out of just an old patio tube I had kicking around. Put on some little casters so I can wheel around a little bit just to make it a little bit more mobile so I'm not dragging around on jacks and engine cranes and pallet trolleys and stuff like that. And that it's uh now just got the hard work of moving this 450 odd kilo lump all the way around the side of my house through a garden bed across grass and everything like that not gonna be a pleasant day especially now it's hitting summer i'll start with this sticker here telling us that we're not allowed to have any baby homeless people 